For their own safety, fishermen must understand vessel stability. This means having and using the knowledge that will allow their vessel to remain stable under load and in all weather conditions. Fishing vessels are required to meet initial stability criteria set out by Transport Canada Marine Safety. One part of meeting this criteria involves having a naval architect conduct an inclining experiment to calculate a vessel's initial stability and center of gravity in lightship condition. This information is a starting point for determining the vessel stability in different load conditions and will assist in identifying its operational limitations. This video will explain how a fishing vessel's stability is measured by conducting an inclining experiment. A roll period test will also be conducted as a means to establish some basic stability information. Summers only, a 40-foot prawn fishing vessel will be used for both the inclining experiment and the roll period test shown in this video. Before we get into the inclining experiment, let's define the terminology we will be using in this program. Light ship displacement weight of a fishing vessel is how the vessel came from the builder, bone stock. Light ship weight refers to the weight of the hull and machinery only, excluding stores, fishing gear, and liquid in tanks like fuel, hydraulic oil, and fresh water. Lines plans are naval architect's drawings that fully describe the hull form and shape of a fishing vessel and are used in the construction process. They are also essential to calculate the volume or displacement of a fishing vessel's hull at any given draft. Displacement is the weight of the water displaced by a fishing vessel at any draft. Metacenter refers to a stable vessel that will always have the metacenter over the center of gravity. The distance between the center of gravity and the metacenter is called GM, or metacentric height. Center of gravity is the point through which the weight of the vessel and all weights on board are considered to act vertically downward. Center of buoyancy is the geometrical center of the underwater portion of the vessel at any heel angle. These definitions include two critical forces, the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy. It is these forces that create a writing lever, or GZ, that will allow your vessel to return to its upright position after a healing force has caused it to roll to port or starboard. With stability dynamics changing constantly on board, understanding the basics of an inclining experiment will help you to identify how stability is measured. Let's have a look at the process. Consultation between the naval architect and the vessel master is important in order to inform the naval architect about the operation of the vessel. At the skipper's meeting I talked to Larry about his boat and the requirements for an inclining experiment. So you want a stability book for Transport Canada approval? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Is this the only drawing you have of this vessel? This is it. Okay. Yeah. We're going to need to have a lines plan for the vessel. What's and a lines plan? A lines plan defines the shape of the vessel. And it's almost like a three-dimensional drawing of the exact shape of the vessel, the length, the breadth, the depth. But it gives you the shape of every section through the vessel. Well, where did I get those? Like well, if you something? don't have one from your naval architect, then we have to measure the vessel and develop it from those measurements. The lines plan tells the naval architect the shape of the boat, and the shape of the boat defines at any given draft its displacement, its center of buoyancy, and its initial stability characteristics at that draft. And I also talked to him, asked him about his operation, and the sorts of weights that are included in the boat from the time he leaves port until the time he comes back during the fishing expedition. What are you fishing for and how do you do it? Uh, commercial prawn fishing and it's by traps. So this is a gill netter. We've got a drum and no, some rollers. This has uh, been changed. Like It was a gill netter originally, like the drawing. But it's been changed now to a trap boat. Okay, how has it been changed? There is a canopy that goes, aluminum canopy that goes right across the whole back of the boat. So there is a canopy here. I need to understand how the boat operates so that I can predict 
the loadings the boat is going to endure. What about food and provisions? All the lockers under the cities are all full of like canned goods and stuff like that. Frozen like meat and, and frozen vegetables and stuff like that we keep in a deep freeze up on that dodger. Okay, now after this stability test, would you be able to tell me, like, I'd like to be able to carry another 200 traps on my boat, like, if I decided to get another license, could you tell me if I safely can do this? The uh, stability analysis will provide that information. We just project a little bit more weight onto the vessel, but where would you carry those traps? Well, there's only one spot, and that's under the deck here, I guess, under this canopy. When conducting an incline experiment, a number of conditions must be adhered to. The vessel must be in an upright condition and on an even keel with mooring line slack. A dead weight survey to identify any weight on board that is not part of the ship is conducted by inspecting all spaces of the vessel. After I gave Larry the drawings, I went around the ship to see what was on the ship in terms of fuel, water. We identified a little bit of fishing gear up on the top deck but other than fuel and water, this vessel is pretty clean. These weights and their locations are recorded. All equipment on the vessel must be secured to prevent shifting during the experiment. All bilges and fish tanks must be pumped out. Cross-connected fuel tanks must be closed at the connection. All persons should be ashore except those conducting the incline and the weight of each person on board must be recorded. We set up the weights and the pendulums and we weighed one of the barrels of water so that we knew the weight that was going to be moved. Two types of measuring devices are used in this incline experiment, a strung pendulum and a U-tube. The decision of whether to use multiple pendulums or a U-tube is the naval architect's choice. It is important to have readings and calculations from different sources to determine accurate data from the results. When using a strung pendulum, the plumb line is attached to the center line of the vessel, sometimes from a cross beam over a hatch. In this case, it is attached to the canopy of the vessel. A weight is secured at the bottom of the plumb line, submerged in a damping tank filled with either oil or water. A scale is situated beside the plumb bob. With the vessel in an upright position, the plumb line should be directly over zero on the scale. Weight positions are marked on deck. These marks allow for measurements to be taken and factored into the formula for calculating GM. Each time a known weight is moved through a known distance, the deflection of the plumb line is measured. One to, two. to help ensure accuracy of the experiment, Transport Canada requires a minimum of eight weight shifts. The formula used to calculate GM is the amount of weight moved times the distance the weight was moved times the length of the plumb line. Divide this by the weight or displacement of the vessel times the deflection of the plumb line. A U-tube is another device that can be used to calculate the GM of a vessel. The other one is this U-tube and the U-tube is a slightly different sort of pendulum but again the water level will shift as the boat tips one way or the other as it heals. Measurements are taken on both the port and starboard tubes to determine the distance of each movement. The same formula is then applied to calculate the GM. Once Transport Canada people arrived on site, the first thing we did is we took freeboards along the length of the vessel. From the freeboards, we'll subtract that to determine what the draft of the vessel was. 29 and 3 quarters. These freeboard measurements, coupled with lines plans, will allow the naval architect to calculate the exact weight or displacement of the vessel. The next thing we did was we got everybody organized to mark the pendulums and transport Canada to witness by where they were standing what was going on. It's pretty close to the My role is to witness and make sure that uh, conditions of the inclining are within prescribed limits and uh, guaranteeing results. 
First of all, uh, I observe uh, pendulum, movement of pendulum and uh, consistency of uh, results. If conditions are uh, not acceptable uh, or on the borderline could endanger results, I should not only advise the naval architect but try to be of help what to change to rescue that uh, inclining. We also took the specific gravity of the water. The water in here is almost fresh. So that means the boat would be sitting just a little bit deeper in the water. One, zero, zero, one, five. Transport Canada requires eight weight movements and so we went through full eight shifts marking pendulum deflections for each shift. And then, by calculation, we looked at, was it a good inclining experiment? And that provides us with a straight line graph. If it's not a straight line graph, it's not a good experiment. And if they lie right on the line, it would be perfect. Reasons for having a not good experiment, inaccuracies in reading the pendulum because of a lot of wind, boat wakes, free surface effects can throw it off. So at the end of the experiment, all we know is, was the experiment good or not? We don't know if the boat is good or not. This is guidance for you. How to the results obtained from the inclining experiment are then developed and recorded in a stability book. A stability book will document your vessel's GM. This distance is a critical factor in determining a vessel's ability to right itself when healed by external forces. It is also the basis for developing stability characteristics in different conditions of load and to identify operational limitations. Now there are two down flooding points that are critical to this vessel and these are the hatch openings in the main deck for the side hatches. I would point out that if those hatches are open, this boat will not meet Transport Canada stability criteria in virtually every condition of loading. Your naval architect can then develop tools such as a loading matrix to be used as a guide in determining safe operating conditions. Yeah, well this is all good, but uh, would I be able to uh, carry another 200 traps or something? Or what, what kind of weight can I talk about to put on my boat? We would need to look at moving some of the weights on the vessel. Like what weights? Like what, what well, I you have a freezer up on top full of food. If you wanted to carry more traps, maybe you could move that freezer down or, or possibly get rid of the freezer and carry your food in the freezer hold. We can calculate that right now if you want and see if you comply in that condition. Okay. Okay. Basically, they said that it was safe the way it is, but uh, if I wanted to carry more weight on it or more traps or something like that, I would just have to uh, make a few simple changes, like remove some of the weight from the top and get it down below midships. They said that if I batten down the hatches, keep my galley door closed and the fuel tanks and, and water tanks and things like that can't be linked together so that you uh, develop a list, uh, you know, a necessary list. So in order for me to do what I was thinking about doing is maybe getting another license and packing another 200 traps on my boat, I would have to make those changes. And then that was uh, pretty beneficial to me to find that out. If you are doing modifications to your vessel, such as changing gear types or adding more weight, it is important to consult your naval architect, as they can tell you if these modifications in any way jeopardize your vessel's stability. So this is the inclining test figures. Uh, what about the other test that you did? That test? Roll period test. Yeah. We measured the period of roll and we uh, put it through the formula that Transport Canada provides for fishing vessels. A roll period test determines the length of time it takes a healed vessel to right itself. The vessel is healed and its progress to complete one full roll cycle is timed. Changes to a vessel's roll period are a rudimentary way of evaluating whether the vessel's stability is degrading. If roll period times are increasing over the life of a vessel, it is an indication of the vessel becoming increasingly unstable and that further assessment of the vessel stability should be undertaken. Understanding how stability is measured and how those measurements can be used to assist fishermen in maintaining a stable vessel is one of the keys to staying safe at sea.